Hey YouTube, welcome back to Military Money Mastery. I'm Dave. Today we're going to be going over commodities. Sorry, it's not the normal introduction. Uh, getting ready to go on vacation and it's early in the morning. So just trying to uh, get this video out before, before I leave. Uh, didn't make one last week, it's a little sick, but uh, I wanted to get this video out because I know it's been requested. So we're going to go over some commodities. Uh, and it's it's something that I wasn't actually super familiar with, but I, it's it's something that I think that a lot of people can, can benefit from. Um, if you have the time and you want to put the effort in um, So yeah, we'll go over this is just a basic guide to commodities um, And I, I hope you guys can take something out of this. Okay, so uh, Let's start by going over what are commodities. So according to Vesapedia, a commodity is a basic good used in commerce that is interchangeable with other commodities of the same type common commodities include gold beef oil lumber and natural gas so that means that you know if you're interchanging two commodities that means you're trading goods for another good right so um, you could trade gold for beef you know or oil for lumber something like that um, so basically it's, it's just it's just letting you know that raw raw materials are, are for trade uh, so most of the commodity trading that we're gonna be looking at uh, will be referred to as you know futures um, and and this is something that we're going to be diving into a lot more than than actual hard sales of, of commodities because it's more the investor side is the futures. So commodity futures can be described as a contract agreement to buy or sell a predetermined amount of commodity at a specific price. Now that, that's important, specific price um, on a specific date in the future. Um, and that's also very important. Buyers will use these contracts to avoid risks associated with price fluctuations. Uh, sellers use these contracts to lock in guaranteed prices for their product and I got an example for you here So let's assume a farmer is expecting to produce a million bushels of soybeans and that's not that's not um, that, That's not anything crazy. I mean farmers do this all the time a million bushels is, is probably nothing for some of these big farmers um, And so typically soybean futures contracts include a quantity of 5,000 bushels per contract uh, if the farmers break even point per bushel of soybeans, and we're just speculating here, $10, $10 per bushel, and it's probably significantly more than that, but let's just say it is, um, and he sees like a one-year contract for 10 for 10 bucks. Um, actually, hold on, let's let's go back for a minute. So if the farmers break even point on the on a bushel of soybeans, is $10, right? And he sees a contract for $15. He's what he's going to do, or she, for that matter they're going to take that contract for $15 and they're going to lock that price in because the break even point would be 10, right? So they're, they're profiting $5 per bushel. So, um, and the reason why that he would do something like this is because it helps him covers or her cover their harvest. So, uh, it, it would make both the farmer money and set his risk to almost none because he has a guaranteed sale at $15 per bushel. So ho hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, on the other side of this, we can buy these futures at a set price, say $15 per bushel, but if the, like say the, the price of soybean skyrockets for whatever reason, say it goes to $20 per bushel, we're locked into buying those for $15 a bushel. So that's, that's a, a, a good point on the, on the, um, on the buyer's part too, right? Uh, so, I mean, that's how you make a profit as a buyer. Um, so let's go over if, as, uh, if commodities are risky so just like all investments and I, I know it's kind of it's crazy nobody expects this but yes commodities are risky um, they can be so I think commod commodities in my personal opinion are a lot riskier than traditional stocks and that's probably because I don't have as much time to go into studying commodities uh, like some people do but um, I think traditional stocks are a lot safer uh, I think that they require less input personally but uh, if you're into commodities that's cool and some people have an inside track and some people actually have a passion for learning about them and we're going to kind of go over what uh, what you have to do uh, to be successful in the commodities market in a minute um, so since commodities are traded on the futures market they're subject to a high degree of what's called leverage um, for example if, uh, if the price of crude oil is trading at $82 a barrel a crude oil future futures contract is for a thousand barrels the total value of the contract is $82,000, right? Pretty basic math there. A trader might only have to post about 5,100 to control all of that though. So what you're talking about is you're, you're posting just a percentage of the of the, um, the contract in order to retain that whole contract. Um, 
So for every $1 that crude oil moves up or down, uh, that trader could potentially either earn or lose a thousand dollars. So if the if the value of the crude oil went down to eighty one dollars, that trader just lost a thousand dollars. So that's that's kind of crazy. If it goes up to eighty three, he just made or she just made a thousand dollars though too. So that's that's something kind of interesting. Usually it goes around by pennies or so, but um, it's it's something to kind of keep in mind. So the risk commodity futures um, is what is what attracts and keeps some some others far away because you know it's risky uh, and because it's it's actually very convoluted in my opinion I mean once you get into it you can probably learn a lot more than I know but um, from, from what I can tell it's, it's pretty convoluted there's a lot there's tons that go into this so um, leverage is is the most is the main reason why so many commodity traders lose money because of that you know that one dollar two dollar swing somewhere up or down and it just costs people tons of money plus a lot of people go into mark to uh, commodities on margins which is um, kind of like using credit so um, so can I or what does it take to make money with commodities so can I make money with commodities absolutely totally 100% there's there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to make any money in commodities if if you know what you're doing so um, in, in my opinion, I, I feel like commodities are very similar to what, what's called options. We're going to go over options in future episodes, but they can be a very good way to increase your capital for sure. And I say capital because you don't make income off of these. There's no dividend payouts. Uh, the only time that you're going to get money is when you cash out. So the hardest part about investing in commodities, for me at least, is spending the time researching. You know, the time, energy, researching. I don't, I don't know if you guys have seen... Uh, pictures of investors and they have like 20 monitors going around that's because of commodities um, and it, and it's kind of crazy how like uh, in-depth these guys get because there's a lot that really goes into it um, so they these guys they wake up or gals you know they wake up before the market opens and stop working when the market closes sometimes they keep working throughout the night you know just researching stuff um, just, Investors typically day trading you're in and out of commodities very quick uh, Most of the time when you're buying futures, you don't want to actually Execute the contract you want to sell the contract before execution date um, And you can actually make a lot of money that way um, And if you're looking to hold the contracts you you know better have a place to store those you know those 82 barrels of, of oil so um, in order to make make money on commodities, you need to have an extremely good understanding of how physical commodities are traded. And I'm, I'm I'm being serious here. Extremely good. So this includes raw material goods, you know, petroleum based product, and industrial, uh, and precious metals. So um, and you need to understand all of it. I'm I'm not joking. Literally everything in order to be to be very successful in in commodities. So. The reason why you want to understand all these is it's kind of, um, let, let, let's break it down with an example. So the price of soybeans goes down, farmers are less likely to buy more industrial goods the next year, right? Uh, meaning they also won't be purchasing as much in fuel costs, which means that, um, you know, the manufacturer of, of say the farm, farm, uh, farm equipment, you know, maybe they don't purchase as much precious metals because they, they uh, they don't need to build as many so it, it actually kind of hits all the markets um, so if they can't buy new tractors track company won't be buying as many products right resulting in less metals and petroleum purchases which also um, results in less industrial products right so there are two fundamental types of um, analysis in commodities so you have setting world events and historical price analysis. So setting world events takes into account everything that's going on in the world. So news, weather, everything. So for example, a forecasted increase in air tra travel might lead you to believe the price of oil will go up. Based on demand for it or forecasted weather, um, you know, based on, on the demand for it. So if a bunch of people are getting ready to fly, so like say it's Christmas, you know, you know everybody's going to be flying out, you know, the price of tickets go up. And guess what else would go up? Oil. Um, because you have to have fuel to, to uh, fuel the planes, right? So, and here's another example. So, forecast of weather might spell out a drought, right? So, decreasing the amount of crops that um, can be brought to market, which would increase the cost of those those uh, those crops, right? So, 
if there's half as many soybeans coming to the market this year, there might be um, a higher, you know, the demand is higher because there's not as much. So it's going to raise the price of them probably double. Um, so another, the other way is analyzing historical prices. Uh, and this takes into account the past price trends in order to break predict the future prices, right? So this relies on identifying patterns and trends and relationships within the market. For example, you may know that um, corn harvest date of every year, and this would mean that you might know the price of corn will drop significantly during this time due to an abundance of crops. So if you know everybody's bringing um, corn to the market at a certain date or time or week or whatever, you know it's gonna drive the price down because the market's super saturated. So that's, that's one way that you can um, actually buy contracts at a lower price and then sell them later when the market isn't as saturated. So in order to be successful, you need to know how to follow all these markets and how to analyze them. I know it's kind of crazy. Uh, there, there's actually a lot that really a lot that goes into it. That's why these guys have like 10 monitors. They're watching the news, they're watching, they look for historical prices. And, and, and I say, you know when corn's coming to the market, like it's, like it's a like it's a set date. It changes all the time. You know, it's it's not like anybody has the the one golden goose. Um, anyway, so you'll need to understand the consequences not analyzing properly as well. So if you don't do your homework, you don't do your research, you know there you may lose some money here. So that's something to to take into account. Um, you need to to understand what hedging funds with within the futures and and you just need to understand what works best for you so if you're really interested in the agricultural market you know maybe investing in agricultural commodities works great for you so that's that's something to take into account too so um sorry it's kind of kind of a, a quick rushed video here i'm um i was sick last week and we're, we're getting ready to go on vacation but i just wanted to to get this video out before i left uh, since i didn't do one last week uh, I want to go over the future episodes, so next week we're, I want to start, well, I might get, be gone next week, so it might might get pushed back a little farther, but next week I want to start going over index funds and ETFs, so I, I think they're they're really beneficial to anybody who wants to trade. Uh, I, I know that's something that Warren Buffett recommends, so it, you know, if, if you're uh, familiar with the channel, you know that anything Warren Buffett says, I, I, uh, <laughs> I'll promote it because he's, he's a pretty good guy. Uh, anyway. I've been Dave from Mon Military Money Mastery. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video.